Hey guys, this is Colin from Australian PPC, and here is another video kind of walking through uh, some shopping feed tips that I actually found from Google. Um, it's actually an article from Google Shopping. You can look it up yourself if you want to go through it yourself. Um, however, I'm going to be walking through, uh, I believe it's 10 do's and 5 do nots. Uh, very simple stuff. I'm going to try to break it down from th their verbiage to something a little bit more manageable and actionable for you. Um, and let's get started. So the very first thing, is when you're what they say in the first do is walk through your end to end customer journey from shopping at to checkout and then identify opportunities that will create a better shopping experience um, like product content landing page and checkout process what that means is basically just have a very easy to use and uh, navigation wise website that kind of has relevant you know a landing page from the very start a home page that matches with the expectation or a product page matches the expectation of a search or like in this situation here, a shopping app. Um, wanna make sure everything matches from the search query to the landing page, to if they see the product, it matches what they were looking for and it answers the question that they had and stuff like that. Very easy, um, the name of the game with Google Ads is all about relevance. Um, no matter what kind of campaign type you do, everything is about being as relevant as possible to from the search to the product that you offer or any kind of services you offer and then you sell that service or product because it matches and solves a need of your customers. So that's the very first thing. Again, make sure you're as relevant as possible and you'll be good to go there. Second, it's basically they're saying, focus on your best selling products to have the most impact on performance, AKA sell and have the most conversions as a high ROAS or low CPA as possible, right? Um, the beautiful thing about smart shopping, in my opinion, for all you e-commerce clients, um, is once you have that set up properly, Google is going to kind of go forward for you and prospect people that have no idea about who you are or what kind of stores you have, what products you offer. Um, and it's not going to choose your best selling products. It's going to try to identify that through data and just sending mass amount of impressions out on thousands and even millions of people if your budget is high enough and the search volume is high enough. Um, but it's not going to always be your best selling products, which I've <laughs> encountered in the past clients want to really push certain products to, and that's totally okay. Um, if you do segment your smart shopping campaigns by, let's say, your best sellers and then everything else, I've seen that work. I think it definitely can work, and it is a good strategy if you have a, a big enough m amount of SKUs or you have clear segmentations of your product categories and stuff like that. I think it's definitely a way to go in that area. Um, I'm still testing that as well. Uh, 2021 has pretty much been for me uh, either a one or two smart shopping campaign for the entire account but lately here in q4 um right before black friday actually i've been testing either very smaller segments um, i actually have a company that works with in the tea industry and we segmented out everything by tea type and actually it's performing really really well um, we have two accounts right now in two different countries and that's the first test and i'm re really excited to kind of see how it performs here in the u.s um, but again, that's just another strategy, and I'll talk about that further in another episode probably uh, about actual smart shopping campaign strategies other than just putting everything in one campaign and letting it run. Um, you can't do too much with that. Google is very selective in how it performs in a smart campaign like that. Um, but again, if you say have 10,000 SKUs and you know you know only 100 really do sell the most or have a good enough ROAS that it makes sense to kind of put ad spend towards that, Google is saying you know focus on those best-selling products um, I think this applies more in a standard shopping campaign than smart shopping. Um, smart shopping will find that if you have enough budget and time um, to kind of find the best sellers. But if you're just starting off, do standard shopping, get some 20 to 30 sales, then trans, uh, go to a smart shopping campaign, and that'll be your best bet there. Third, uh, include important attributes in the titles, such as brand names, age group, gender, size, color, uh, and any personalization is if you have uh, you know applicable stuff like that. Uh, basically, again, from the very first one we just talked about, be as relevant as possible, um, and that includes having relevant information in your product titles to kind of differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself from other competitors in that shopping carousel. In smart shopping, since you are kind of in a you know a funnel of one, just yourself being shown to new customers or existing customers. You don't have to worry too much about really front loading your um, your product titles or just even having a good product title. Um, if you have really good images and you have a really good overall brand, I don't think product titles are as necessary. 
but definitely if you're trying to go out and you're trying to introduce a new product to a new market, you really want to segment your titles in the best way possible. Um, and I do want to have a caveat here that Google doesn't tell you about is don't touch anything of your titles unless you have your UPC or GTIN codes already installed on your in your data feed actually. Um, if you don't have those codes, once you update a product title, Google will actually think that's a totally new product. So if you say you have three, four months of uh, data, you have your you know, 10, 20 best selling products in that campaign, everything's working really well, you scaled, and then you <laughs> update your titles, Google is gonna pretty much think that's a new product. It might have a little bit of historical relevance because of the data in that campaign or account. However, I've not seen clear documentation or even performance on clients that I've had in the past that once you update a title, if you don't have that UPC code or GTAN code, it's just gonna pretty much restart that learning mode. And I've seen compl campaigns actually fail because of that. So now it's a best practice of mine. I know other agencies do it as well. Um, you always wanna make sure you have that identifier code um, in your data feed, in Shopify, in your whatever CMS you're using, or just add it as a supplementary feed in GMC. It's very easy to do through Google Sheets and uh, have it in there, make sure it's registering, and then uh, do some product title editing. Um, it's very easy to get, by the way, most of you should have it from your manufacturer. If you just ask them, hey, what's the, what is the GTIN or UPC code? They should have the information for you. Uh, there are some cases that they don't, and then you need to kind of create one. Um, pretty cheap to do so if you don't have too many SKUs. Um, I think you can go to uh, gsp1.org or something like that. Just look up GTIN UPC codes and you'll find that information available to you. Um, but definitely do that first. Fourth, uh, and I kind of just talked about this as well, uh, front loading your titles with important attributes not visible in the image. So basically what does that mean? If I can't identify something very clearly on the image that you provided, you know, your main image, but there's something really amazing about the product or the service that you have, put that in the title because how, well, how else will I know about that if I'm looking at your product versus five other ones, right? If they have that information in the title, but I can't see it in your photo, I'm probably gonna side with them. So. Make sure you put your most compelling information in the very beginning of the title, um, your USP, uh, you know, your unique selling proposition. If you have very direct competitors, especially in the shopping space, that's what I see all the time. And that's one of the main things I require for new clients is that they actually have a USP that we can differentiate ourselves from an actual other competitor that may be in the same auction as we are. So that's that. And then uh, fifth, I believe, is just maintain up-to-date availability and pricing tax, shipping, all the kind of stuff, which actually it's a little bit, it's difficult to get set up at some points if you're not a GMC expert or don't aren't familiar with the whole process of uploading your feed, making sure Shopify is working on GMC. But with the recent announcement, I believe in September of this year, Shopify and Google actually partnered up for I think 2022 to kind of help you along with making it easier to kind of get shopping as launch from Shopify. It's already very easy, but there are some sticking points and GMC right now is very, very particular. If you don't have everything set up very properly or the right way, the perfect way, you're gonna get suspended. And it's not a warning like it used to be. I used to get four to 15 days of warnings depending on the client. Now I just get suspended and I need to you know, work with the client to make sure, hey, is tax, so the shipping settings updated properly? Is there a policy that we're missing? Is there some, you know, is there a link that's pointing to the wrong product, uh, wrong image? Is the price mismatch? That's a main one, um, especially during the Black Friday, Christmas kind of period and all the deals that are going on. If your prices aren't matched identically every time Google pulls that feed, normally once every day, then you're gonna get suspended for misrepresentation probably. I think that's the normal one for a price mismatch. Um, but make sure you have a correct feed tool pulling in your feed. The easiest way to do it is usually through a content API feed, aka Google pulls it directly from Shopify or your CMS. Um, and then there's kind of third party solutions like Data Feed Watch, some process. Those two are pretty easy and pretty okay to work with. Um, you need to take some time to kind of get familiar with the dashboard and how, how does it interact with each other. But again, content API usually is a pretty good way to do it just go through that Google Shopping Feed uh, app in uh, Shopify, and that'll be very easy to do. All right, sixth, almost done here, uh, is provide the most detailed product type. Um, now I've seen different texts about this through Google's language. Uh, the product category is important. Uh, that will identify Google. I think they have like 5,500 5, uh, different categories of products that will give Google an, a sense of what your product is, who it's for, um, who to push it to in smart shopping, especially. 
Um, and that's good. It actually now will try to do that automatically for you if you haven't submitted that. So if you go into your Google Ads and add some columns, you can actually see that in Google Ads if it's trying to do that for you. Uh, I've seen it work pretty well. I always want to check it though because sometimes it's just a little bit off. Um, I have a dog bed company actually and one of the, it was very, very close, but it was pet supplies, not dog beds, and that can get very granular, but it, at the same time, it does help you. So make sure your product categories are good to go. Um, product type, I believe this document is about a year, two years old now. Product type isn't really necessary anymore. I do always make sure it's there for clients, but I don't see much um, up-to-date information from Google saying product type is very important. Um, and this is more for your, yourself anyways. You can create custom labels of product types and stuff like that. So. Don't worry about it too much, but make sure your product category is uh, very, very specific and down as far as you can go, down the five layers deep. All right, um, product landing pages. You can't do too much about this because your feed from, say, Shopify will pull it directly to yeah, that product, so nothing to really worry about there. Um, then, oh, this is another good one, actually, uh, images. So images are almost everything in terms of a shopping ad itself, and especially once they get to your site. Um, I love having either uh, uh, videos on the site as well that really helps the product be shown in a different way than just a standard photo. Um, I would definitely recommend to show both uh, product only images, like say in a white background, and then also lifestyle images. Um, I've seen both work better than other depending on the product and the um, overall industry, but I think it's a thing that you should all test and definitely something you want to kind of look there for. Um, and then next is use uh, different opportunities like product ratings, seller ratings, and then also merchant promotions, which is a very, very big one right now since we are in the holiday kind of Black Friday spirit, is using your opportunities as you can because a lot of competitors either are not aware of them or do them incorrectly so they don't show and get disqualified um, and et cetera like that. So biggest thing that you could do right away is just apply for GMC promotions. It's just a quick form. You can look it up. Just look up GMC uh, interest and promotions form, submit for it. it, takes like a day. And then once you get that, you go to your marketing in GMC and hit a uh, new promotion and just go to there. It can be all products, just very small products. Um, whatever you decide, get very granular in there. Um, as well as do that on Google ads, it's a lot easier, gets approved way faster, but GMC is better for shopping because I actually show tags or sales on the product uh, itself when it's being shown. So that's cool there. And then the last do is run experiments. Basically, just keep testing. That's what they're trying to say here. Um, if a standard shopping campaign doesn't work the best, if you have your high, low, and medium priority campaigns and you're segmenting out, but hey, you kind of reached a wall, try smart shopping. If smart shopping isn't working that best, you would try the stair step approach, you try the new customer acquisition approach, um, try to segment to the products, go back to standard shopping, or just try more search heavy uh, YouTube, stuff like that. There's a million different ways you can test, and Google is just basically saying keep testing. All right. And then we have a couple more don'ts uh, and then we're done. So one is keyword stuff. I don't think that's a main concern in 2021 anymore. I don't think many people think keyword stuffing is relevant for either SEO or Google ads kind of, you know, uh, a benefit. Um, I've seen some stuff work still on YouTube with making sure your titles and descriptions are all very re relevant. You have tags associated with that, um, but that's not shopping. So don't keyword stuff. And then also don't have promotional text in the like the actual title so don't put in uh say like a don't put in any sales or stuff like that that will get disapproved automatically in uh, gmc uh, as well as any exclamations or questions stuff like that um, don't include that in gmc does not like that at all um, don't have the same product title for the multiple items in your feed duh makes sense and then yeah if you have any images that aren't the, of the product itself or have promotions on them or logos stuff like that will get disapproved and then, uh, yes, and the very last one actually is actually pretty good. Make sure your colors are associated with a, like a, a name that someone knows and not just a very unique name, like uh, say Midnight Sky with a little bit of a hint of a dark blue. No, like it's maybe on your product page, but in the say, in the attribute in your title or in the color item of your feed, I would just say very, bring it down to someone or not everyone would know what it means. So. That's pretty much it. Those are some 10 do's and five don'ts. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and uh, share it as well. And thank you again for uh, coming back and seeing what I'm talking about. See you tomorrow.